I would like you to imagine as my eight-year-old son came out of school, he handed me his book bag and, <gasps> Matthew, I don't know to this day how I caught the hood of his coat quick enough as a car screeched inches from his feet. All eyes turned on us. They knew a tantrum was looming, but nothing prepared me for what happened next. Why did you stop me? Why didn't you let me die? I don't want to live anymore. And he screamed at me like this the whole way home. I felt sick inside. Had he have cut his finger, I could have put a plaster on it. Had he have crashed into that car, I could have called a paramedic. But he had crashed emotionally. At eight years old, he was suicidal daily and diagnosed with Asperger's. And months later, we received a letter saying he doesn't need an assessment. So we needed to make a change, and we started home educating. Matthew changed. At least he stopped talking of dying. And then at the age of 13, he developed a well-known condition called teenage brain. His sister just said, yeah, whatever. But Matthew shut himself in. He shut me out and he shut the world out. He faced that brick wall of depression and he said, I don't want any help. So no one helped for five years. I was here all along, but this was my dilemma. Anything I said could be ta like taking this sticking plaster and putting it on a broken leg. There we go. And saying, no, there, that will be better tomorrow. That will not heal a broken leg. And that will not promote emotional healing. At 18, Matthew's depression hit an all-time low. And it frequently took me three hours to talk him out of the deepest, darkest pits. But I knew I couldn't be there for him every day of his life. And that he needed to learn to manage his own emotions. But how could I teach him something that I couldn't explain? All the self-development tools were there, but something was missing. I'd been able to talk him out of that danger zone even day after day, but I just couldn't prevent him from going back in. I set about finding a new coping strategy. And I realized that with Matthew's Asperger's, he struggled with invisible concepts like time and emotions. So I needed to find a way of making his world of hidden emotions a visual mentoring tool. So I started with four core emotions and four colors. As the system formed in my mind, I added a fifth color. And this represents a change of emotions because I now realized that we change between emotions because something changed, either positively or negatively. And using just this, I started to mentor Matthew. And over the coming weeks, his three-hour dips in depression reduced to one hour each time. He now started calling me. He now started seeking improvement, not hiding from it. And then one day he phoned me to say, I just talked myself out of one in 10 minutes. Next, Matthew started helping a friend. And he was asking my advice secretly. And just a few weeks later, his friend sat drinking coffee with us and just randomly said, I've realized that hanging around with Matt makes me a better person. Wow. <laughs> In that moment, 
I realised the potential power of a simple but mindful system and the importance of continuing its development. Over the last 18 months, it has now evolved to this, and it looks a little bit more sexy. It now shows that our emotions surround us, and that the change happens within us, and change happens around us. It shows that change knocks us down, and we rise back up. We react to change through fight or flight. And this is rock bottom. You've seen it in all the best movies, where they go and they punch it out in that gym, or they go and they have a good cry before they make that breakthrough. This is the emotional diagram of those triumphant moments. I've realized that by chunking life into these five colors, we can begin to understand their emotional starting point. Stephen Covey wrote in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People about the concept of understand before being understood. A magician, Brian Miller, he's already done an amazing TED talk on this concept alone. And as if by magic, he actually looks a bit like my Matthew. But if you skip this trick, you become that sticky plaster person who hasn't understood the injury first. Yet how many emotional crashes do we treat this way? Grow up and act your age. Life isn't fair. Get used to it. Only you can get yourself out of it. Do they sound like someone who has tried to understand? These sentences tell them what to do, not how to do it. We tell them there is light at the end of the tunnel, but we don't give them the map of the tunnel. We tell them they can achieve anything they put their mind to. And then on leaving school, they learn they must start at the bottom. We prepare them emotionally for the destination of success, but not the journey of life. Now imagine one person being knocked back and stuck in one of these colors. If they lack the life experience or the control to make those changes for the better, are you now going to be their sticky plaster full of quotes or their emotional mentor? Many will still need professional help, but there are many more who could learn to help themselves with the right emotional mentoring. I'm just a mum but I am leaving my corporate job in two weeks to start sharing our experience. At the age of 20, Matthew sat beside me on a bench in the sunshine, and he put his arm around me, and he admitted, what a pain in the arse he had been. <laughs> and he thanked me for never giving up on him. He said... I now know why steel is forged in the fire. The more you go through it, the tougher you get. Matthew had finally understood that he had come through that tunnel and into the light. And he understood there would be more challenges, but he was ready to embrace them. So let's teach our younger generations using more emotional mentoring. Let's teach them why we should embrace negative change as a challenge. Let's teach them how to make changes for the better. And let's teach them to take control of their own lives, their whole life. Thank you.